All right, so my text is created. I'm going to choose fit to zoom back in my view and let's adjust this light. Now this light I want to use as my ambient light, the main light for the entire scene. And then we're going to bring in a couple other lights that we're going to use to light the 3D text as we want them to be. So I'll take that light that's selected and go down to the parameters. And I'll take the Z position. I'm just going to drag it straight back. So you'll see it going or disappearing from the view because we are moving it back toward the camera. You'll also notice that it's affecting the scene differently. Then, well, I got it about 2,500, just so you know where it's at. And then for the light type, I'm going to switch this to be ambient. And you'll notice that it, it changes the way it affects the scene. It's a softer light and the distance away doesn't affect it as much as something like a point light or a spotlight, the default light. And I recommend getting in the habit of naming different elements if you want. As your scene gets complex, it's really helpful to be able to navigate and find elements because you've named them. So for this light, I'll come down where it reads object, I'll click in the field and I'll leave it named light. I'll put an underscore, I'm just going to name it main. So now it's changed inside the schematic view. It's also changed inside the object tab there. All right, so let's add a couple more lights to relight the word fix it in post. So to do that, I go to my action bin. I hit the L key over my tools once again. I take the light, I drag it up, and I'll drop it right here. You'll see the light comes in and you can pick it up in the view and move it around or again go to the object tab and use the parameters to move it in this way. So right now I have two lights and they're intersecting. They're working with each other. And what I want to do is have this light only affect the word fix it in post. I don't want it affecting my background. So this is where we want to access some of these tools I just showed you. So I click the tool tab. I go up to light link. Shift L is the hotkey. I choose that, my cursor changes to the light link icon. Now I click off of this light, you see what's happening, there's this blue line that appears. Whatever you drop that blue line on, you are going to tell smoke to affect only that element. So with this light, light one, I drop it on geometry, you'll notice the viewport change because this light is no longer affecting these other sources, these other media sources. Now taking it one step further, if I want the main light not to affect the geometry or any light that you want to have not affect something, hold your option key and click off the light with the light link active, light link tool active and drop that on my text. Now you'll notice the light, light one is only affecting my text. I wanna get back to my select tool, shift M. Now, as I select this light, we move it around. You can see it's not affecting the back layer, the guy, anything else. It's only affecting the word, the 3D text, fix it in post. And now I can take the Z position for the light because it's selected. Again, notice the tab is telling me light one is selected. I'll bring this out a little bit. Maybe bring it back over in Y like this. I'm sorry, in X like this, bring it down in Y to light this side of the text. You also have your intensity, your spread, your fall off, your decay options. You can change the color of the light if you wanted to. Lots and lots of controls over your lights. Now I want to duplicate this light. I want to make a second copy of it and move it over here. You can choose copy and paste or a faster method to me is using the duplicate option, which you can right click to access or with something selected, hold command and hit D. And now a second light has been created. All the parameters are exactly the same because we duplicated it. I'll hit Shift L to get my light link tool. I click off this light, the blue line appears. I drop it on the geometry. Shift M, I go back to my move tool, my select tool. And with this light selected right in the viewport, I'll drag it over here. And now maybe we want to take this and Z and bring it back a little bit. We want to adjust the Y position and just manipulate the positioning and the intensity till we get the text to look exactly as we want it to look in the alley. Now going back to my text, maybe I don't like the fact that it's pure white. So I'll select my geometry. You'll see that the parameters change below. The 3D geometry, the text has several different levels of control. At the 3D text level, you get your, your font input, all your size and so on. I go to geometry, here where I control specular, 
ambient diffuse and what I'd like to do for the diffuse I'm going to just click in the white swatch and I'll take this down just for reference I've got this set up as HLS I'll take my lightness slider and just drag it down a little bit just to give it a little gray touch to it and click OK and then maybe I'll select light one and I'll take this in Z a little bit more like that bring it up a little higher so we're just going to adjust the lights to try to mimic exactly how it would look if it was actually in the alley but the next thing I want to do is I want to build a relationship between the text axis and the lights. Now the lights come in, they have an axis built in automatically. So this node is not only the light parameters, it's also the axis all built in one. So if I take the axis for my 3D geometry and we manipulate or move it around, our lights are not going to move with it, which means the lighting would change if they are not together, if they're moving differently. So to build a relationship, a parent to child relationship of any nodes in here, like I said earlier, when we stepped into the action schematic, this is a relationship schematic and an easy way of selecting the different elements in your 3D scene. So with this axis here, the axis that is controlling my text, I want it to also control these two lights. So I can drag off of the very edge, not the center. If you grab the center, you move it around. Go to the very edge of the light and click off of it. Now you'll see I get a white line, just like I did with my light link tool. But this time I have my select tool and I drop it on light two. And I'll do the same with this one. Drop it on there. Again, you see the arrows pointing down, explaining the relationship. Look at the blue. Let me zoom in. You can see this. If you look at the blue lines, the ones that are controlling what is being lit, the arrows are going into the geometry. So it's telling me that this light is affecting this. Same thing goes with this. This axis is now the parent of both these lights. So it is telling me I am controlling that. So with this axis selected, looking in the viewport, when I rotate my text, what's going to happen with the lights? They're going to rotate with it. So the lighting's always going to stay the same no matter what I do with that text. All right, let me choose the fit option once again for my schematic. Let me move my camera out of the way a little bit. So now let's talk about this. We have the original camera movement taking place from the original shot, obviously. And we have our cloud layer in the back and it's not following the movement of our camera. And obviously our text and our lights, they're not following the movement of the camera. So what I want to do is create another axis, which just holds transformation data. Track the camera movement from the original LE scene and then build a relationship with that axis to the cloud layer and also my 3D text and the lights. So I go back to the action bin. There's my axis tool right there. Pick it up, drag it in. It's just sitting there doing nothing yet. Double click on it. It's going to bring up its parameters. Again, for organization, I like to name things. I'll name this track with cap lock on. This is going to be my tracking data that I want to repurpose for any layer that I need to fit the movement from the original camera from this LE scene. Now, because of the fact that there's definitely some rotation taking place while the camera moves, I'm going to come down with my tracker, my axis track selected, and I'll turn on rotation. I don't believe there's any scaling, so I'm just going to leave that off. Now I'm going to click where it reads stabilize and we're going to step into the tracker. Wait, you know what? Before I do that, let me reiterate something. Going back to my media tab, you'll notice that the background image is that same footage. I told you that in the very beginning when I said I wanted to feed this image of the guy walking in the alley into the green input of the action tool. It's because of this. When I add an axis like this, that's just floating out there. When I go into the tracker for this axis, it's going to look at the background to find the reference footage it's going to use. If I don't have a background input, it's not going to know what to get the data from. It's going to be a blank area. So that's why I fed the background. I'm going to media, sorry. That's why I fed the background in inside of ConnectFX. You know, just for demonstration, I'm going to hold Control Escape. That's the hotkey to go back out to ConnectFX. This is what I'm talking about. I fed this footage into that green input only because I want to use that as my tracking reference. I'll hit the escape key again, back into action. Double click on my track tool, my axis name track. I bring up my parameters. Rotation is on, scales off, that's fine. Choose stabilizer, we step in. It's the same tracker that we used before 
when we used it on the control points of the mask. But this is going to be applied to that node, that axis node. And because we had rotation enabled, or you can have scale enabled, or both, you'll have two active tracker boxes. A hotkey, just so you know, to access tracker boxes quickly is the number, number above my letters. Hit two, tracker two is enabled. Hit I'm not, I'm sorry, selected. It's not enabled. They're both enabled. Hit one, that's now selected. Okay, so what we'll do is just pick it up dead center there, and I'll drag and drop. Make sure you grab the center because you can grab the tracker box and the reference box separately if you wanted to. I always like to zoom in, make sure I'm getting my tracker exactly where I want it to be. I want the center of this reference and tracker box right on that corner. I'll hit the two key, which selects tracker number two, and I'll just pick it up and I'm going to put it right over to this wall. So these are great reference points right here, right? Let me zoom back. I'll choose fit. In this case, I'm going to leave fixed on because the reference that I'm using at frame one for this track is not going to change or barely change if it changes at all. So I'll leave fixed on and I'll choose analyze and let smoke go through. And there we go. That's done. So the first tracker box, just to make sure you understand, analyzed our X and our Y position changes. This one over here, tracker two, analyzed any rotation that was different between the two trackers. That's why you want to have them a pretty good distance apart from each other to really give a good reference of any rotation or scaling if you had that on. So let's choose return. So now this node called track, the access name track, is holding that data. I want to connect it and create a parent-child relationship with the elements that need to follow the movement from the original footage. So I'll drag off. Again, don't go right to the center. Go kind of to the edge and click and drag off the track axis. I drop it on the axis for the cloud. Now watch what's going to happen. It's going to reposition this layer so the center of this axis lines up to the first tracker box. That's just the default setting. Just double click on the axis for the original media, the original layer, and we'll take the X position, move it over. You can go right in the viewport and grab the handles if you want to manipulate, move this wherever you want it to be. Now let's do the same for our, our 3D text. So I click off the axis that is named track. I drop it right on there. Same process. The text and the lights all move. We go back to this axis, the one that's controlling our lights and our text. And again, I'll just move it over and we're going to position it down to an area where we think it's going to, he's going to walk into it. He's going to bonk his head somewhere around there. All right, here's where we need to move stuff in 3D space to put him in front of the 3D text. Remember Z buffer is on because we want to have distance. We want things to be close to the camera and further away from the camera and so on. Let me just organize my schematic a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm holding the Alt key and I grab this axis and anything that's underneath it or a relationship with will move with it. So if I took this tracker right here, you'll notice that everything that's connected to the tracker is going to move by holding the option, option slash alt key. You can move and position your nodes around if you want. So here's where I really want to start looking at the relationship of these elements in 3D space with my camera and so on. Now I'm going to show you a trick here. I'm going to go to my media tab and I want to turn off my background. Why do I want to turn off my background? I'll show you. If I take this view right here, my schematic, and I want to look down on my scene, I want to look from the top view, I can come over to my views, and you'll see it says 3D views. You get perspective, camera, front, side, and top. If I choose top, we're now looking down on the scene. The default setting in Smoke, though, is whatever you have set as your background will always appear in the view, no matter where it is. Now, my, my background isn't really laying at a 90 degree angle like that, but the setting for the viewport, this is just the way it is, is always showing it. So if I don't wanna see that, in this case, I don't need the background. Remember, I used it only for the tracking data. I can come down to my parameters and tell the back to be off. And now I just don't see it. I can clearly see the different elements looking down in the top view. And again, a great workflow tip for you is the escape key. When I'm looking at the top view and I want to make sure I have a specific node selected, I hit escape. I select the axis for this layer right here, which is the guy. I hit escape. It takes me to the last viewport you had. So it's a toggle between the action schematic view and the most recent view you've looked at prior to having the action schematic displayed.
There's my camera too if you want to select the camera and access its parameters you can do that. But what we're going to do here is go to our object tab and I've got the proper axis selected. I'll take the Z and I'll start moving it toward the camera. We can see the icon in the view right there our layer moving toward the camera. It has moved in front of the 3D text which is exactly what we want but because we've moved it closer to the camera it obviously appears larger because it is closer to the camera. Let me undo that command Z. Every layer you have in action you can turn on this option called auto scale and it's a great option. You can set it to be position only which is the position slider or you can choose on all transforms which means when you rotate it you scale it whatever it's going to auto scale it and that means as I move this in Z space toward the camera I'm doing it I'm moving it toward the camera you can see it over here you see it's not changing in the view because look at the scale value smoke will automatically scale this layer dependent upon if it's moving closer to the camera or further away from the camera so now I was able to create space in between the 3d text that's floating in the air and the layer of the top part of the guy's body let me hit the escape key go back to my schematic view the next thing I want to do is I want to keyframe the word fix it in post to not be visible until just before he turns and walks into it okay so let's jump to I believe it's about the 37th frame I, I'm going to just click in the field and enter 37 for my field here you see he's just starting to turn auto key button is on you can see the yellow LED indicating that it is active so let me select my geometry my text go to the geometry tab set your transparency to be 100 I'll use my right arrow key to move forward one frame and I'll set this to be zero so now the text will appear at the 38th frame let's adjust some keyframes though let me go to my animation curve editor all the way over here on the left so here's where we can access everything that's being keyframed and everything that's inside of your scene a couple filters I want to put on I only want to find the elements that I've keyframed so I go to the filter tab over here on the right hand side turn on animate and then underneath it switch the option to be expand and collapse so right now all keyframes relevant to the 3d text are highlighted because they're selected we see all keyframes that are in the scene I can also click the frame button over here on the left hand side which then will frame the keyframes I want to scroll over on the left hand side here in my animation channel area in the list and find the transparency option and I'll click on it which then in turn will select it and deselect everything else then I'm going to go to my keyframe tab I'll tell the interpolation not to be linear or you might have it set to Bezier depending upon your preferences that you've set up I have my preferences set up to be linear by default I believe the default is Bezier doesn't matter what we want to do is switch it to constant so now it's going to be a step it's not going to be any transition whatsoever over the duration of one frame I don't want it to slowly become opaque over that one frame I want it just to snap once you've done that let me disable the animation curve editor so if I use my left arrow key there's no text I use my right arrow key there's the text right as he walks into it 